should you buy a higher mileage Porsche? The Porsche that I'm driving right now is a 2013 Porsche Cayman S with 62,000 miles on the clock. Now enthusiasts of these cars generally put on between three and a half to 5,000 miles per year, meaning that this car, this 2013 car, should probably have about 31,000 to 45,000 miles on, but it actually has 62,000 miles on, and it didn't put me off buying it. So what about much higher mileage Porsches? Well, I've owned a few Porsches with over 100,000 miles on the clock, and again, it didn't put me off buying them but there are a few things that you definitely need to look at and definitely need to think about now it's pretty obvious that buying a higher mileage Porsche is going to be cheaper than buying the same car with a lower mileage so you could potentially use the money that you've saved to put aside for any potential repairs that may well crop up and believe me they will crop up Now, Porsche engines with a few exceptions are generally quite reliable engines so providing these engines are serviced well you know they stick to the service schedule there's no reason that these engines can't cover a few hundred thousand miles. But one thing that you definitely need to consider is the fact that it's not just the engine which has covered a hundred thousand miles, say for example, it's the gearbox, it's the suspension, it's the, the suspension components, the clutch, the wheel bearings, the list goes on. Now over time, suspension bushings, rubber parts and moving parts will need replacing, they will need refurbishing. So if you're test driving a car and you're hearing these clunks or bangs or pops when you're going over potholes or uneven road then the chances are some of the suspension components will need changing but the good news is it's not as expensive as you might think you also need to think about the bodywork of the vehicle because if the vehicle's covered 100,000 miles for example then the bodywork has obviously seen more snow more salt more crap debris stone chips will have got into any open gap or any open hole that it possibly can a lot of the newer cars have preventative measures to stop these uh, stone chips chips and salt getting into certain places but the older generations like the 996 and before that don't have that sort of fall back in place unfortunately. The good news is though that because these cars aren't cheap they haven't fell into the hands of dare I say it, hooligans or people that aren't looking after the cars. The chances are that people who are owning these cars they are enthusiasts so they are going to spend a bit of time a bit of money investing into the vehicle and keeping it in excellent condition. So if there has been any rust or any bodywork imperfections, you would probably expect that to be dealt with before you go ahead and buy a car. And there will be plenty out there that have been dealt with, so if the one you're looking at is rough around the edges, then either factor it into your budget or walk away because there will be something else. I think possibly the main question here is, should you buy a newer Porsche with higher miles as opposed to an older Porsche with lower miles? And if we put aside any emotional connection on which Porsche is best, whether or not it had, has fried egg headlights or not, um, to an extent we need to look at this in sheer black and white terms. One way of looking at it would be that I'd rather buy a 2015 car with 100,000 miles on the clock rather than a 2005 car with 50,000 miles on the clock. That older car will have been sitting around a lot not always garaged and will probably have some deterioration from the rubber suspension parts and other components due to the age of the vehicle. A newer car will have better systems, better modern tech versus an older car that can leave you frustrated because it doesn't really fit in with the modern world because the technology is quite outdated. I would say that buying a Porsche with higher mileage really shouldn't put you off at all and in some cases could be considered safer because components that can fail at lower engine mileages will no longer be an issue. I'm talking about you IMS bearing. It's generally considered that if the IMS bearing hasn't gone by a certain mileage then it's pretty safe to assume that it won't go. And if you're not sure, I'd definitely recommend a PPI or pre-purchase inspection. It might cost you a few hundred quid but in the long run when you consider you're probably going to be spending a minimum of about £20,000 in any case, you may as well spend that couple of hundred quid, get the car checked out for your own peace of mind and to make sure obviously that you're not buying a lemon. Let me know your thoughts guys, please put a comment in the box below in the comment section. There's probably a lot that I've missed out. If it was down to me and I have no questions, I would, wouldn't be put off with buying a higher mileage car at all. I've done it many times. And yeah, I've had to do a few repairs along the way, but that's motoring. You can't, unless you're buying a brand new car, there's nothing, there's no car that you can buy that would probably see you own it for three years and not have to do any repair to it. Those are just the facts of owning cars. Anyways, hope it helps. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.